Okay, so I decided I'm not going to do a process video. I'm just going to kind of um, stop and then kind of show you some bits and then stop and then show you some bits and then uh, try that for a change and then see how you guys like it. Uh, and then maybe I can explain my process video a little better, but um, we're going to try this and see how it works. So I started off, I'm going to use this as my photo. And this is a photo I picked from, I had to be at uh, the clinic for uh, my pre-op for 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, this was in February. And I had to leave my house by, I think it was uh, 6 o'clock in the, yeah, I had to leave by 6 o'clock in the morning, not up leave by six o'clock in the morning so it was a very very early morning but it was perfect timing because i got to see the sunrise so this is the sunrise so we're gonna use that so i've got my mask and i've got my modeling paste and um how did i make it uh i guessed <laughs> um i kind of watched a video uh from oh my goodness what is her name uh, I think it's called uh, Lovely Scrappin' or Lovely Scrappin' or something like that. So anyway, uh, I saw her make it on one of her videos. So I will maybe leave a link to how she did it and uh, put it down below. But honestly, I just guessed. I just guessed like one part gesso, one part matte medium, and then I just kind of uh, used a whole bunch of cornstarch until I kind of got it to like a cake like mixture and I did a test on it just to make sure that it was the consistency that I wanted it to be oh my goodness my sister is texting me so and all I'm doing is just I'm using like a flat back spatula so even if you had like a yucky old icing knife that you didn't care about you could totally use that you could use a flat one but it is a little easier to use if you have something that's a little bit raised up like that like a little even if you took like a knife and you, you could bend it like that that would work too so I'm just trying to I'm just gonna put some random bits here And then just kind of random. Like I said, I've never done this before, so this could be a total bomb. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I don't want to, like, overfill um, that because, like, my uh, picture's going to go roughly right about here. So that's where I'm thinking I need a little bit of texture. So that's kind of my my reason. So I'm just going to wipe this off and I'll be right back. Okay, so the other thing I forgot to show you guys in my products that I was going to use was this um, Dry Fine Stickles. It's by Ranger and it's uh, really, uh, like I'm not even going to open it. I'm just going to shake it around, but I just want a little bit over top of that modeling paste just to kind of give a little bit of gold so some of it's gonna stick and some of it's not gonna stick and I just want a little bit I don't want a lot um, so that's lots I don't think I use my glitter near enough so we're gonna set that to the side oh my gosh it looks like a fairy threw up all over me um, I'm just gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna get ready to start working on uh, my picture and I think while this is drying I'm gonna just work on my flow photo and clusters underneath that so I'm gonna stop here and I'll be right back okay so uh, while I was off camera I got a couple things kind of together to um, kind of get my layout to the way I think I want it to go so I've got some layers going on here some vellum some rope just some different mix of pattern papers that I've got going on I opted for not going for the darker cardstock because if you see what I mean it just kind of really darkened that photo down and needed to kind of keep it a little bit lighter so that's why I opted for the back side um, so a couple things I'm just gonna put that aside for now because I don't want to um, 
kind of make a mess on my photo. Uh, but I pulled out some of the wood veneer from the kit. And I spelt out 7 a.m. sunrise. So I'm just going to stick those over here because I may use some gold embossing powder. Uh, but what I also did is I took that star die cut piece and I used the tarnish brass uh, distress stain to ink it up. And it gives it like an older gold look rather than this. Um, so it's a little bit darker of a gold, but it's a different... Um, it's still gold, but it's a different element of the gold. Um, so it does have that shine to it, though. So it's still drying a little bit, so I'm just going to set that to the side. Uh, but I thought I would try and do a little bit of water coloring. I just need to grab a water brush. Okay, so I had a little bit of technical difficulties with my camera. So sorry about that because um, you guys missed out seeing... Um, the water coloring and all I did is I took the distress stain and I started I tried over here in this spot over here just doing direct and then just taking the brush and uh, watering it out and it gets a little too seepy into the paper and it's a little harder to control um, so I honestly would suggest just daubing um, some of this uh, distress ink onto your craft mat and then mixing it in with the water and then you can kind of control uh, your hues like how dark you want it and how light you want it. I had to really water this down to kind of get it similar to um, the color stains over here. It was just a little too dark. So I would highly recommend just watering it straight off of the craft craft mat off of here so that's an FYI. So I just kind of thought I would show you oh and the other thing I think I would do is um, the, I think I would do my watercolor underneath and then do the modeling paste over top. Um, I, I thought it would act as kind of a resist and it doesn't. So I'm a little disappointed with that, but I just kind of thought I would show you, um, where I'm at for how it looks. And you can kind of see, um, you know, what my thought process was. And um, just kind of adding these layers back in here. And again, I just like little, like for my layers, I just like little peaks of the color. And that way it kind of leads your viewer into like, they see this star pattern. They're like, oh, I wish I could see what's underneath. It's just kind of one of those mental things. It's not like they're visually... Um, say it out loud. It's just kind of one of those uh, very um, psychological things that, you know, they see half of a piece of paper and they can psychologically put it together that, you know, it's the whole piece, what the whole piece looks like. So I think that's what gives layering um, so much different effects to it. So just kind of monkeying around with some of that fabric there. Or adding some layers so this is generally what it's going to look like and of course I've got that rope in there and I thought maybe um, adding like a hint of like the star paper somewhere along this way here so that's kind of what I got going on um, you know I just thought I'd show you and then uh, I still have to put in uh, two more die cuts so I think what I'm going to most likely use is I'm not sure if I can get this one to work but it does have the triangles in it so I'm gonna see what this looks like it needs some balance this way and that's what I mean by balance is you can kind of see how it's kind of all focus very uh, linear this way and it needs something a little bit more horizontal and that's what I mean by balance is you can kind of see it's a little too um, up and down and it's very much centralized over on this side and we need to kind of uh, make your eye follow this way so that we can kind of get the viewer to look on the diagonal this way. Okay so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to look for something that I can bridge this way. Okay, so I think I have my kind of um, 
horizontal element. So I just added some gray cardstock underneath here, and I also have it on here. So it kind of balances out this way. And I also have this um, uh, Project Life bag that I cut into little pieces, and I'm just going to have that underneath. And I also put this twine, and it just kind of carries along the page. So it gives a little bit of a lighter uh, horizontal line. Uh, but it still gives that horizontal line to kind of draw your eye this way. Um, so that's kind of where I was going with that. So um, these pieces here still need to have um, some sort of colorization or inking or something like that on it. Um, if I am going to stamp these pieces here, I don't want to add um, too much texture to them. I want something light on it. Otherwise, it's going to start to look... Uh, a little heavy um, so you know something like similar to this where it just adds a lighter tone of the gold and then uh, these pieces here as well these need to be um, inked up some sort of way okay as I was saying my uh, computer and I have been having a little bit of fights lately so I think I'm gonna have to take it to the doctor and get it looked at but um, what I was saying is, is I put this, uh, this is that hemp cord, and I put that down, and then I just stapled it along the edge, but I used uh, some of that this and that to kind of um, run along the string so that I could keep these little swirls in place, and then that kind of adds that horizontal element that I was kind of looking for without it getting a little too heavy, like a very definitive line this way. Uh, so I'm just going to set this aside for a second. So I was going to show you what I did. Now, if you could kind of see, let me bring this back for a second. If I was to use this white piece on here, it looks a little odd. And the reason why it looks odd is because a lot of these colors are cream based. Now, it's on a white background, but it has a lot of distressing and everything on it. Uh, and there is some white in here, but there there is cream in this paper and cream in this paper and um, it's okay as long as you have a definitive line between them and they kind of do with these splatters and um, the modeling paste but when it's on the side like this and it has no um, texturing because like I have inked the edges and everything like that this looks out of place it doesn't look like it belongs so we need to make it look like it belongs so with that being said I went ahead and I did a little bit of prep and what I've taken is I've taken these tags and I've taken some of this antique distress stain and all I did is just squeeze it on the mat and you can see the little spots there and then I'm just going to take it, pick it up with the brush and again I'm just going to add a little spot of water and I still can't find my spray bottle. Oops, that's way too much. That's okay. Just gonna add a little bit over here. That's a lot, but it, the paper soaks it up. Like this is not watercolor paper. So just go along and just let the paper take the ink. And of course, um, if you let it dry and you go over it again, it will. Um, add a little bit more colorization to it but you can kind of see that um, this one here I'm just gonna wash it out a little bit and now this is going to be tucked behind all those layers so um, this bottom part isn't going to really see anything you can kind of see between this one and this one how light in comparison they are so you can see that. So this one definitely needs a bit more color on it. And actually, I think I'm just going to get a little bit more on here, but get a little bit more direct. And I'm liking how that is starting to look a little better. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Okay, so I have my little basket of stamps out, and this is kind of like a pull, a whole bunch of stamps that 
um, are like I kind of put my stamps on a rotation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'll take some stamps out and I'll put them in this little basket and then, well, it's a little plastic container actually. Um, but I'll pull out just a few. I'll use them for a while. Then I'll put them back in my stash and then pull some more out just so that I kind of get a little bit of variety of the stamps. Um, so I use this Amy Tangerine stamp. Um, this is the calendar one and, um, I have never used it before. I'm totally guilty of buying it, not using it. So I went to go use it, and I'm honestly not impressed. I don't know if anybody else has tried using it, but you have to be really, really specific with pressing your uh, numbers into um, the stamp press. And otherwise, um, if you can see over here, how it's got like these little holes where they aren't filled in right and I had to really press down um, to get it. it it's got kind of a like a vintagey look to it so I like it and I'm going to use it but I'm not impressed with the stamp I'm not sure if anybody else feels the same but anyway that's my own impression um, so this one here needs a little bit of something so I'm just going to rummage through and kind of see if you know there's you know some sort of element that needs to be added uh, like this one's got that cool camera that would fit on here really really well and it would kind of uh, be accented underneath um, there's also this cityscape one um, I just kind of thought I would show you my thought process as I'm as I'm going through um, there's also this clock because the time is relevant in this uh, particular layout um, there is this one that says today. I might pull that one out. And, and I think that's pretty well good. I'll just pull those ones out. Um, might leave those ones in there. Okay. So, I think for this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the cityscape one because I just don't think it is going to uh, I don't think it's going to be visible and I want something a little more relative to the layout so I like the camera idea and it is big enough that you could see it on the back side or through that other um, tag so I'm just going to get a staff lock now, as for color, I don't want to use black, and the reason why I don't want to use a black ink is because there's no black relevant anywhere on this layout. Everything is really brown, pink, gray, uh, some turquoise in here. I think I'm actually going to use some gray charcoal ink, uh, just because to add a different um, color there's already brown over here so just to add a different color so I hope you guys uh, I, I would like to know what you guys think of the way I'm doing this um, I just don't know if you guys rather the process videos or if you would rather uh, me explaining kind of on the spot uh, my thought process as as to why I'm doing it sometimes I get a little too um, talky in the videos about what the picture is about and what the layout's about and I kind of forget uh, about explaining why I'm doing things the way I am um, so if you can kind of see you know this camera can get tipped up like that you can still get the idea that it's a camera it's just kind of popping through and actually I could switch this around I just want the date the date is the important factor on here, um, just because uh, this particular day, maybe I'll explain the photo, um, this particular day was when I was going to uh, my pre-op appointment, and I think I explained this actually, now that I'm saying this, kind of deja vu. Um, so if I didn't say it, put a message below and say, hey, you didn't finish that off, but anyway. So the date is relevant. Uh, and then again, I think I just have to figure, I think I'm just going to use these as my journaling. I don't think 
I'm going to um, stamp on them. And I just kind of want them on random, like random length. I don't want them to be um, exactly uh, parallel. And I want them to be, um, you know, kind of random like width. So, and, and not straight by any means. So I want them like that. I'm just going to use some glossy accents. Oops. And I have really big troubles with my glossy accents plugging up. So if anybody knows a good way of keeping your glossy accents from plugging up, uh, if you could send me the tip for that, that would be fantastic because it's always forever plugging up on me. And it gets a little bit to be a bothersome. And I still think I want to add that geotag there. I think I want to add that geotag. Okay. So I'm liking how this is all looking. So I'm just going to add uh, some of my little journaling in, and you guys know I take forever for my journaling, so I'm just going to stop it here, I'll come back, and my journaling will be finished. Okay, so I got my journaling done, and I'll show you that in a minute, but I thought it would be neat um, to add in um, some of uh, that clock, because the clock was relevant. This is this really super big uh, staffer, but it won't fit on this one. These are the only ones I have out right now. So I think what I want to do is add the clock in, what color do I want to put it in? I think I want to put it in this soft brown. I don't want to do a really heavy dark color. So see what the soft brown looks like. And this is just some cardstock that was left over from um, the die cuts that I had cut out from the silhouette. So I'm just going to pull this over, see what it looks like, and it doesn't look too bad. Actually, I don't mind that color. The only thing is it's white, so I'm going to have to add some distress stain. Okay, so, so there, that's that looks better. Okay, and then I'm going to add these little hands. I should have did this first, but it'll work. And then here's the small one. All right. So then that that's relative to the time. That's my thought process on that part. I should put this little hand away before I forget. And I'm just gonna cut this out. Actually, I probably have a circle punch that fits that. Um, I like to use a circle punch whenever I can because I am a crooked cutter. So if I can get away with using a circle punch, I'm going to use a circle punch every time. And it fits perfectly. So then there's less ring about um, cutting it and making sure. And it, it was wet, so it frayed a little bit. But I actually think that gives it some interest. See if you can see that. See how it frayed? So then I can ink up the edges, and then it gives it a unique look. Then ink it up. Let's see what I mean. So it gives it kind of that distressed look. I could have waited for it to dry, and I probably should have. Um, but I like the fact that it adds some texture to it. Okay, and see now here is where I'm starting to get a little worried because I have a lot of browns going on. So 
my next thought process here is I need to start bringing in um, some more color here and some more color here. Um, it doesn't have to be bright. It just has to be another um, color that is relevant to the pattern that's going on here because there's a lot of brown here and a lot of brown here and a lot of color here, but nothing else in these two spots that kind of, you know, bring everything together other than these pink little stars here. So that is where my next thought process goes is how do I work in some color without it getting too overwhelming? So I'm going to grab a couple things and I'll be right back. Okay, so I was realizing that something that I was missing on there was some ribbon. And typically, I kind of shy away from ribbon. It's kind of one of those things that makes me super nervous. Uh, but I decided that those tags definitely need something to cover up those holes because they were a little odd. Uh, so I'm just going to show you to this. I started pulling in some labels as well. So that's going to be kind of where my clusters are going to go. That's going to be kind of what anchors my cluster embellishments. But you can see I added some of that ribbon that I said I wasn't going to use. And I actually ended up using it on one of these tags. And this one here, I need to cover up this hole. So what I actually am going to do, because I don't have any like really great pink ribbon that works, um, I have this ribbon that I got in a rack from Sandra. And it's actually not the ribbon it's this itself it was um she gave me some we are memory keepers um like project life uh cards and she had them all wrapped with this ribbon so it's just plain white ribbon it's grow grain ribbon and i actually went to go use my sponge sugar which i thought would be a really nice soft pink so I don't know, can anybody, can you guys see this? I think I'm going to contact Ranger. Okay, so look, there's absolutely no color in here. And I've had it sitting in my stash for probably a couple years, but there's absolutely no um, pigment to it. So if you look, there's like no pigment to it. It's just absolutely clear. Like this is like where the water has um, soaked into the paper. That's absolutely clear. So I'm going to be contacting Ranger. Let me know if anybody else has had this problem too. And, um, you know, if you have, then, uh, you know, please let me know what happens if you, if you contacted Ranger. Um, secondly, if you haven't had that problem or have that problem and have not contacted Ranger, let me know. Um, and I will, uh, find out or let you know what happens uh, with my particular situation. So I'm moving on to uh, Worn Lipstick, which is the next shade up. So we're just going to, I'm going to just kind of get it going here. And you can kind of see it's really bright. And it's a little bit too bright for my liking. It might dry a little lighter. I'm just going to get rid of that because that's a lot, that's a really bright pink. And for those of you who don't know, this is the Ranger craft sheet. And I actually have mine um, glued down to just this piece of board so that I can move it out of the way, but it's permanently attached. I don't have to worry about wrecking it. I already like, got a hole in it, so that's kind of why I'm worried about it. Uh, getting ripped some more and I can't afford to buy a new one and I'm on the 50 projects no buy so obviously I can't. So I'm going to dry that ribbon and see if it dries a little lighter and then I'll come back. Okay so it brought uh, dried still a little bit brighter than I thought it would but I laid it down on the page and it's actually not that bad so I'm just going to use it anyway. You can kind of Maybe see if I got my hand out of the way that it's not too bad. It's a little brighter than what I wanted. And that's why I wanted to opt for the sponge sugar. So I'm just going to pull this tag out for a minute. And then that way I can attach it down. And then I'll clip my ends.
And I just thought it was just a little too bright, but it was just a pop of the pink, and it's not going to be um, overwhelming, so that it should be okay. Again, it's not it's not the exact what I was looking for, but it should still be still be fine. Okay, so back to what I was kind of working on here. So I did I did find a couple things that I wanted to use in my cluster. So again, I had that clock. I added these labels, and these are from the printables from the uh, May kit. I have this clock. I have this star. You can kind of see how I'm working the layers. I'm adding a little bit of colorization um, to the layout because you can see it was just getting a little too um, brown. It needed a little bit more. So I hope that makes sense to people. And let me, and again, let me know if you like the way this is going or this isn't going. So this is this is a trial thing. Okay. So and then I've got this pink label here but the banner is the wrong way okay so it says it says hello but the banner is the wrong way so I'm going to fix that by nipping it off here because I don't need quite that much and then I'm gonna just add in a notch over here and then adds that element of pink back in but it needs some inking around the edges, so we're just going to get the blending tool. And then we will add that right up in here. It still adds a little bit of that pink and adds that uh, brown. And actually, I'm going to move it over like that. And I can move that star up here. And you can kind of see how I try to fit in um, the layers so that they work well with the papers. And I'm going to attach this clock down. I'm going to add some adhesive dots or foam dots, whatever you call it, um, to that. And then that gives it a little bit of dimension. Add some pink in there. It needs, it's starting to need a little bit of more blue. Again, I just want a little bit of embellishment. I don't want it to get a little too crazy because otherwise it starts to look clustered, not uh, like a cluster. There's a bit, big, big difference between cluttered and clusters. So keep that in mind. Sometimes more is good and sometimes less is good. Um, there was just a little bit of white showing, so I was just nipping that off. And again, I'm just adding some brown ink. And then we're going to attach that down there. And then add these stars. Okay, so I got a few more... Um, bits on here. I'm just going to zoom in so you can kind of see a little bit better. Um, you can kind of see I added some washi tape here. I added this little piece that says Instagrammed, which it's not an Instagram picture, but it still signifies that it's a picture. Uh, okay, so hang on a second. I have to zoom out and then it will probably pick it up. See, there. Oh, it says Insta Love. I'm sorry. And then I added that washi tape. I glued down the star. I glued down that other star over there. Um, but you can kind of see. Let's see if it'll uh, zoom in. There we go. Uh, you can kind of see how on this side it's kind of lacking a little bit of blue. This side is. Um, it's got this blue to tie into that, so this part's okay, but this is, is lacking a little bit of blue. So I'm just going to start looking at some embellishments uh, that, you know, um, are that bluish tone. And there's a little blue star here that I could add in. I like that, so I'm just going to ink it up a little bit. And when they're... This small, it's more or less, I just flip it from one side to the next and then just add a little bit. But it adds a little bit of blue back in, or I guess not blue, but that tealy color. 
Now there is some of these little blue stars on here. Um, so add some of them. Maybe I'll move this one up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to add another little blue star over here. And then this last one finally over here. Just to kind of um, make your eyes start to go this way. If you, if you kind of, it's like one of those loose lines that Shamel Lane always talks about is it's going this way. So it leads your eye going this way across the page. So I'm liking that because it's adding a little bit of blue back into the, that. So I, I'm liking that. Now here's a good question. When do you think the layout is finished? Okay, so I'm just going to pan back. So we can all look at it together and I'm just going to move some of this stuff that I have pulled aside. Okay, so here is what I look at to figure out if a layout is finished. Does it look like it has anything unbalanced? Does it look like I need to add anything to the top layer or the bottom layer? I look at those two first. I look at, at this part first, the top and then the bottom in relationship to the photo. Now, in relationship to the photo, I don't feel that it is because I have um, these this modeling paste on here and it kind of is drawing your eye up. I have these little gold sequins that's drawing your eye up and it doesn't, and because there's this watercolor on here already, it kind of does have a little bit of element of color on it. So for the top and bottom, to me, it feels complete. Then I start to look from side to side. Now from side to side, does it look unbalanced? And to me, it doesn't look unbalanced. I have kind of little bits of uh, something flowing along this way. I have a vertical element this way. And um, especially this rope along, it kind of drops your, draws your eye all the way across. So to me, this feels complete. This feels complete. Then I look at my journaling. Does that feel complete? Yes, it looks complete. It feels complete. Does the title look complete? Yes, it does. So um, that's kind of what I look at to see if it feels finished. Um, and the other thing that I do is I'll set my scrapbook page aside for, you know, maybe an hour or something like that. Or even while I'm cleaning up, uh, like after I finish a layout, I'll just kind of tidy up. I don't like like overly clean up but I will just tidy up and as I'm kind of putting stuff away I'll just kind of glance at the page and see if it's still um, lacking something but at this point to me I feel that this page is complete and I would be happy to put this page in my um, album and I'd be happy with it so for now I'm gonna say it's complete if I do come back um, it will, I'll show you the add-ons, but for right now, it looks complete to me. Um, so if this is the end of the video, you'll see the close-ups. If it's not the end of the video, you'll see the next part next. All right. So thanks for watching. Bye.